Well, I know you did a study on there. Sixteen thousand dollars. What you do? You drill or? Yeah, there were eight, there were four steps. Yeah, I'm just curious. I mean, what did you find? We found uh, we found rock. We found different uh, materials there. There was uh, a little bit of moist material, but nothing that was significant. Not. Did she say, did she say, did I take a couple feet off? Yes, I should. And then Michael Bullock, you go down a couple feet and say, that's a number four. That's, that's, what, we're, that's what we're doing with our parents. Yeah, yeah I'm, just, I'm just curious. Okay, one other one. Yeah, one other one. Yeah, one other one. Yeah, one other one. Yeah, one other one. The bridge over on the south end, I see you guys have some grant, right? Yeah, yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. I mean, that's just for, for um, uh, charging. Charging. I mean, they're, they're being combined with South Bay grant. Oh, okay. Uh, and then there's money coming in from Newberry. So there's money coming in from different areas. Who's going to do the plans? I mean, because it costs a lot of money. Right. Uh, right. And what? That's what I already said. Can you put it around for like a grant or what are you going to put? How long have they been in? Because I wanted to get to the thing that's supposed to be going to work for. I don't know. I don't know. That's why. All right, I got to go. I got to go. Yeah. I can do it. Yeah. I know you can. A council would like to call Morgan Prater up to the podium, please. Hi. I've never actually attended one of these before, so uh, I'm just a concerned citizen. So uh, uh, Mr. McDermott was kind enough to take uh, my uh, neighborhood aside and give advise us on what uh, we should and should not say. So um, basically, we, we just, uh, as a, uh, on Patterson Avenue and Bridgeville, we got together and created a, a petition in regards to an issue that we've uh, recognize on our street that's been on, on and off going for about uh, three to four years in that a homeless person was living in a van and um, Mr. McDermott has advised us that now that the borough is aware of it that they're going to continue to look into uh, how to address the situation and uh, we have a petition that we're going to provide to uh, someone uh, at some point along with some uh, uh, pictures that we get. Is that all that I yeah. And I, let me say something too to uh, the gentleman in the neighbors. I, I very much appreciate that. Let me clarify. I did not, and again, please, I did not ask you to tell you you can't say anything I really want to say. I ask folks to be sensitive, and I very much appreciate the sensitivity. What I convey to the folks in the neighborhood on behalf of council is that this is very much a concern of councils as well as general topic. Not only ours, but it's something that's, that's a, uh, a problem. Uh, for others as well. Um, it is a matter that, that's being looked at from, from our real estate point, the administration and the, um, and, the, and the police department as well. High ground this and similar types of situations, constitutional rights all over the place, and it's things that we're trying to be very sensitive to the individual situation, to the neighbor situation, and to the public safety all at the same time. Chief has a confidence level in that right now that we're. But I also explained to you that the first, the first line of defense to the offense for these things because the board is like the board of directors of the community. Your CEO is, is this lady here. We call her manager. She's our CEO, really, the chief executive officer of that. And so all things code in working in tandem with the solicitor's office and law enforcement, but from a code perspective, the way we'd like to address it at that level. Um, I've also lived in there some I know that um, to, to contact uh, Lori and I, and we're going to talk with them if there's more information that might be helpful for us to grapple with the situation, and that that will also be helpful. So we very much appreciate your assistance. Well, and thank you for advising. Like I said, I've never been to one of these before. We're just concerned citizens. Yes, there are no individual names, just uh, I'll pass it down to the And you're welcome to have one. That particular is whether that's something I recommend to the administration. Actually, yeah. I'd like that just to go on the administration. Just the
Weiss, representing the Bergeville Area Historical Society in part. The first part is recognizing some people in this area who did a tremendous job last night. Unfortunately, I miss seeing quite a few of you. Uh, as you know, it was the 15th year since the horrible day, Tuesday it was, uh, 15 years ago. Last night was tremendously excellent. The music, I am a musician, part, some of you know that. It was absolutely, the choir is fantastic. They are really, really great people. Whoever put it all together, I think it might have been Bill Chilio, but the Knights, of, well, the Knights of Columbus get the most accolades because it was it. tremendously well planned. Not me. And actually, the speakers were phenomenal. The one from the State Police Department had nearly a thing in his hand. He talked. And he talked very well to joggle our memory banks to get back to remembering the sacrifices. Uh, as I said, everything was extremely well planned. The Knights of Columbus did a terrific job, and I just wish that it had been an SRO group there to see and hear. Particularly Tim Murphy. Actually, he, he had me partly in tears and partly sympathetic. He brought in history and it was a great, great way to spend a memorial service. Bruce was there right behind me. Nina was there. <coughs> oh, Joe, yes, the baby was there. <laughs> Joe, the Tim's baby. But next year, I hope we do the same thing. I hope the Knights of Columbus open that church for us, and I hope we do an SRO. I already talked about there. I already mean Steve already talked. We're pushing to keep it in there. Everything, everything last night was Bruce Collins. Uh, going back to the Historic Society, I've been handing out literature. We are trying some new approaches this year. Uh, one. John Euler recommended, and those of you who read him in the Bridgeville News know that he is a very good historian. So the first of the second Tuesday series is tomorrow night, and the topic probably is going to be the history of human class. Very strange that we're doing that when they left Bridgeville in came the General Electric Company. Next August, the General Electric Company will be gone to this region. Um, come the other months, I think in October, the second Tuesday, they'll do a history, and I said this to the mayor today, the history of Greenwood Place. Probably no one knows where Greenwood Place is, but it is a great little area which has a lot of rich history. So we are focusing these programs on local histories. Then at the end of the month, we are continuing to have open to everybody from everywhere. Believe me, they come from Hampton, Carnegie, Green Tree. Uh, they come from uh, uh, somewhere on the rock 51 South, just to hear our speakers. This time, it's Todd de Pastino. It's the last Tuesday of this month at the fire hall. Todd is a part-time now professor of history at Lancaster College and University. He also is the organizer and the manager of everything, every breakfast that's held on the veterans, full southwestern Pennsylvania. But thirdly, he's an excellent speaker. And of all things, he's got to speak on all the rotten, dirty things that happened in past directions. So it should be a fun and interesting night. We are starting video recording. It's still pretty much getting used to it and trying to organize it. Uh, so far, we've interviewed two, but we're going to go back and interview them again once we get more uh, stability and that's all more, uh, more common sense, maybe. Um, I think you'll all have to come over before the election. 
here, we have a young man who does some of our uh, computer books. He is a good one. He took the vertical display case that's in the wall permanently, took everything out, put a new backing back there, so he could put up all the blurbs of past the elections, pictures, headlines. It's an interesting little twist to what we do. Uh, Saturday, I went to call on a gentleman asking him to show his employees what I started to hand out here tonight. And he said, oh, I have a box of pictures for you. But I didn't realize that you're too heavy for me to carry. Then I got them home. It took me two hours Saturday night, two hours last night after I came home from the church. Uh, and I found an original Ed Salomon photograph. And you don't know if you don't know that Bridgeville has had rich artistic. I've had Salomon chairman. Okay. One other thing has to do with traffic. On, Ball, on Dewey Avenue, somebody please study that. Um, if it's not a four-lane highway, consequently, if there are people parked on both sides, which is most of the time, you cannot get two cars through in the middle. So you have to find a space to pull over to let somebody else go through. I'm sorry, it's rather dangerous. If you're coming down McMillan Street in the daytime, you want to make a right on to Dewey Avenue, you better be careful. If there are a lot of cars parked there, they can't see you, and you can't see them until you're right there. So, and the other one I want you to really study is the killer that's going to happen out here where 519 and 50 meet to go into that park. I'm sorry, where you have your bank. It's going to be a killer. People block that. If you're looking here for a car coming this way and you're walking through, what's your choice? Where are you starting? The intersection of Route 50 and I took and 519. Where the light, the one light is. That's really dangerous. Thank you, everybody. See you tomorrow. Or if you're going to do it. The council representatives yeah, hi, uh, my name is Tim Nath. I live on Chestnut Street and I put my application in for planning permission, so I just thought it would be appropriate to show up here and introduce myself to the council. Um, you've got my application and resume, and, and I won't recount all of that here, but in short, uh, my motivation for applying for that position is really personal. I've uh, lived in Bridgeville almost my entire life. I've grown up playing ball here, and now I've got kids who are playing ball here. And just the last couple months, I've been looking for an opportunity to get involved locally and give back. Um, that said, I think I've got a number of professional skills as well to lend to that position. So again, my resume, uh, a number of years, background in strategy and planning. Uh, I won't take you down all of that, but I think uh, together with personal interests combined with uh, professional skills and, and attributes um, might qualify me for that position. So uh, that said, I'm mentioning my career at the 7.30 conference call. I regret introducing myself and running for the door, but I appreciate the opportunity. I wanted to put my face in front of you guys, and uh, I hope you find my application um, worth consideration for the position. I look forward to hearing something. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council will recognize Jim Window. Good evening, folks. Good evening. Jim Window, Party Street, uh, 21 years here at Bridgeville. Thank you all for your time uh, that you give to our, our community. Uh, I represent the Bridgeville Athletic Association, been a 10 year member there, uh, six years on the board, presently the treasurer. Last three years we've had uh, three break ins at our at the concession stand. Um, each year we've, we've made repairs, and uh, so here I, I brought my iPad, I have a few photos. Um, we have, a, we have a, a lot on the outside, and they just keep smashing, and so uh, smashing it off or, or frying it, and they go in the doors. Uh, and uh, the vandalism, there was spray painting um, and uh, flag and, and so forth down there. But needless to say, uh, and there was some things uh, 
It was a little bit on the table this last time. So I'm here to ask the, uh, the council to consider a new door for the concession stand with a deadlock, um, a metal door with a deadlock. And, uh, if, 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 if you'd like to take a moment, uh, that's I mean, so. Uh, Jim, just, just confirm, we do not keep money down there. Uh, it was right? a, it was a small it was a small amount yeah, a couple a couple dollars that's right not people breaking in think there's hundreds and hundreds of dollars no we've never had never had never had Jim just as a note there's there's been a new door order oh wonderful thank you very much well how are you all right so I'll spread the word of my name to you who says that don't you when Jim speaks at the action happens well thank you so much. For your time, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. The lighting? Yeah. Is there lighting on this board? They actually fixed that light last year after the break in, so that the lighting is a lot better. Okay. So, thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and last but not least, Jewel Lakes. Uh, just a few things. I, I had an idea, I don't know if you guys thought about this or not, but that house you guys bought next door there, why don't you do a swap with that guy who bought that property down there and he can go up here? Put a parking garage underneath for that. The building right I know, there. I know this one. Which building? Which the, guy, the guy that has it all fenced in down there with the oh, weeds going oh. up there? He wants to put a building up there? Dr. Roy, yeah, Washington Avenue. Yeah. Right. Can't you guys work out some kind of deal with him where you have parking? Yeah, you parking the trucks underneath there? And, I mean, that would be a hell of a development. I mean, you could put two-tier two, two parking lot there, and you could put offices on top of that. That would cap off that avenue real nice. You guys are always talking about doing that. Well, we're not going to do that. We're 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 going to do do we have it? I mean, that's the first. No, I'm just saying that. Yes, yeah, that's something. I want to throw that out there. If you go down the other end there, where he wants to put that right. building up, it's going to be landlocked, and there's not going to be no parking there. It's not going to be no parking. So that's something we have to approach and see. I'm just saying that you can put a multi-floor office building there. You can rent that out for whoever has the property. Or what deals made? I don't know how deals are made because I'm not that smart. However, um, I think something can sound like that. And the other thing I can say is with the park. I periodically go down to Charter Park, and it's deplorable down there. It really is. It's, it's bad. I mean, you got people breaking windows down there. You got um, people spray painting flag. I was upset about that. Um, but get the damn thing down. So I came up here and let them know about it. That that's upsetting. That the flag shouldn't be up if no one's there. I mean, we got borough workers at the end of the day, they can pull the flag down. Or if no one's gonna be there all day, then no flag needs to be up. But there are people that are coming to meet Yeah, but we need to respect it. I mean if there's not gonna be no light on it or if there's not gonna be no, you know, no one down there. Um, there's no reason for that. I mean, that's the one that I should make sure to be with. Very well. Yeah. All right. Thanks, really. Thanks for hearing me out. No problem. All right. Uh, move on to the regular meeting. Uh, minutes. Motion to the Borough Council for running the minutes. So August 8th, 2016, regular minutes as submitted. So we'll move. Second. Uh, Bart and Bruce. All those in favor? Carries. Proposed words number 991, Block 1 Road Parking. A motion for a council regarding proposed words number 991, Lawrence of the Borough, Virtual Borough, amending the Borough of Virtual Code Ordinance, Chapter 15, Motor Vehicle and Traffic Part 4, General Parking Regulations, 15 402, Parking Prohibited at all times in certain locations, specifically to Road Parking in certain locations on the Block and Run Road. Remarks, ordinance have been duly outcast. So moved. So, and Joe Boston. All those in favor? Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. 
Closed Works Number 992, Planning Commission Membership Increase. Motion of the Board of Council regarding Proposed Orders Number 992, amending the Visual Code of Orders, Chapter 1, uh, Administration and Government, Part 3, Boards and Commissions, 15 301. A, to increase the planning commission membership from five to seven members, the ordinance has been duly out of that. So moved. Second. Second. Third. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, planning commission appointment. Uh, advertisement was placed on September 1st, 2016, requesting letters of interest from candidates wishing to fill the two vacant seats on the planning commission in terms uh, to the first Monday in January 2021. The following letters were received. Uh, Mary Weiss, Eric Schmidt, and I have Dale Livingston, uh, George Espiadas, and Judy Bush. Um, we got several, uh, obviously several people were looking to fill this position. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to table this for at this point. I am directing Lori to contact each person. Um, and we're going to set the time at the borough, the borough building here. Uh, or will be available, they can come, talk to us, uh, just as an information aid, correct, I have to do that. And uh, so we can kind of get a better feel. Some of these people we know very well, some people we don't know at all. And some of the people, some of the people we don't know at all has some very nice resumes and we'd like to learn a little more about So, we need to come with the motion to the table. Okay. 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 Second. Second. Joe, all those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Mr. President, if I might say, it's back on the agenda. Um, recommendation would be to adjust the appointment so that the 2020 in order to us align with the agency requirements that are not going to be expired. Zoning here, zoning here, Joe? Yes. Okay. Uh, Joe, Motion of the Borough Council accepting the resignation of Nina Petroselli Sr. from the Zoning Hearing Board due to his appointment to serve on the Planning Commission. So we first second. And Joe Wilson. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, those opposed? Motion carries. Zoning Hearing Board appointment. An advertisement was placed on September 1st, 2016, requesting letters of interest from candidates wishing to fill a vacant seat on the Zoning Hearing Board with a term to the first Monday in January 2019. Following letters were received, Jeff Calarucci and Dale Livingston. Uh, ditto on this uh, because we're the person that's on both, so we're kind of going to take this at the same that we did with the main commission. Uh, Bruce, second. And Burke, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, resolution number 2016 07, a motion of the Borough of Towns regarding resolution number 2016 07 as a PENDOT requirements 1.10.14 signs and banners across state highways and resolution designating the intention of St. George's Church to place one banner across State Route 50 to be installed on September 30th, 2016, and removed on October 30th, 2016 for the St. George. Church Mediterranean Food Festival will be held October 28th through October 30th, 2016. So, Bruce? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Resolution number 2016-08. Uh, motion to the council board. Resolution number 2016-08. As for PENDOT, requirements 1.10.14. Signs and banners across State Highway. A resolution designating the intention of the Virtual South Bay Rotary Club to place one banner across State Highway 50, Rock State Rock 50, installed September 13, 2016, and removed on October 2nd, 2016, for the Virtual South Bay Rotary Club Chili Cook-Off to be held on October 2nd. Second. Second. Joe and Neil, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, railroad, I'm oh, sorry, Washington Avenue sidewalk replacement under the Wheeling and Lake Erie Railroad and expanded limits. Uh, bids were advertised and publicly opened on Thursday, August 4th, 2016, 10 a.m. in the Council of Chambers for the Washington Avenue sidewalk replacement under the Wheeling and Lake Erie Railroad for passing some of the notes following the same results. Uh, we talked about this last meeting. Um, I think we're going to we're 
Well, I think you're, you're also going to this. This is focusing on the scope of the portion outside the trust service. And then I can make a lot of all the other So they can call back like today, but to have it, but I can call it. I'm doing the trust Bill List, motion for 
of accounts regarding the September 2016 bill list. So move it. Boots. Second. And third. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, payrolls. Motion of Borough Council approving the payrolls of September 16, 2330, and October 7, 2016. So move Bill. Yes. And Bruce. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, monthly reports. Motion to accept and pay any commissions due to August 2016 real estate tax collector report. Um, uh, Joe Gucci. Second. And Bert. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to accept the uh, July 2016 financial report. So, uh, Joe Gucci. Second. Joe uh, Bosco. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Motion to accept the August 2016 police report. So moved. What is that? Good bill. And Neil. All those in favor? Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. And a motion to accept the August 2016 zoning report. So moved. Second. Bill and Joe Cosmo. All those in favor? Uh, all those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, committee reports. Administration. Bruce. So report, sir. Uh, finance. Joe Rucci. Uh, taxes are starting to come in, so therefore our balances are healthy. Uh, we will be starting to uh, uh, get ready to prepare for the budgets for 2017. And uh, we had a significant decrease in the collections through Georgia this past year, the past month, so we're very happy and satisfied that our discussions with them uh, seem to uh, have uh, been addressed all on, on this question. I'm happy to see those. Uh, Parks and Recreation, your question. Yeah, Gloria, I mean, she told me about the door being vandalized, and she had told me that they were replacing the door. Like last meeting, I mentioned that vandalism down there was pretty bad. We've got some parking to repair the swings down there, but unfortunately, it's like a the bridge that fabricates some parts to make the darn things work, so they're working on the swings. And as I said, it's cost me that part down there at night. It's dark, it's desolate. Nobody goes down there unless you don't really have belong down there, so we need to get cameras in that part. All the parts, really, because there's been vandalism in all our parts. So uh, it's just the way things are anymore, and maybe a camera can catch some of these people, prosecute them, maybe scare them a little bit, you know, stay the heck out of there. Uh, that's all i got to say. Hopefully, we'll be a finance committee and find some money for the next budget next year and find it some trips. That's all. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Public Works. Yes. Um, we, Public Works, we're going to get together with the uh, Public Works guys and see what we can do as far as the, the sidewalks and uh, we can get a contractor to help with it. Uh, we're working on that. Um, things are winding down from the summer. The parks and that uh, this year they've paid five vitalities, several catch basins. We're also working on a cost sharing program with uh, Pittsburgh Water, or Pennsylvania Water, to repave uh, the street, uh, Main Street, where they've dug up to put the new water lines and the, the fire hydrants in. It. So, Lori's working with that. And uh, they've been working on the sidewalks and repairing them up on Cold School. There's a list of other stuff that they've been working uh, all around. And we're going to start looking into getting into the creek to clean up as, as the summer winds down. So uh, those guys are staying busy. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, public safety. Okay, last a couple of things. Yeah, first, first thing, I met with the uh, fire chief portfolio and he brought to my attention uh, once again the, the uh, house numbers on the uh, residents' uh, properties in the community are not consistently being displayed. Our ordinance, and uh, I, he has willingly offered his folks to go around and find those in violation of the ordinance 
if we intend to enforce it. So my suggestion tonight is that we have a three-step process here. That first of all, we take the ordinance department up on identifying those in violation and, and having the lawyer talk to Lori, and she's agreed to send letters to them. We'll give them 30 days to come within compliance, and at that point, we'll send a warning letter to those not in compliance once we find out those. And after the next 30 days, I say we, we enforce the ordinance against those that have it in front of them. The thing that I would say is those in violation are actually allowing certain situations to increase the danger, increasing the danger for our emergency responders. So I think it's imperative for us to, uh, to act upon this. I appreciate your willingness. Uh, I, think, I think also the post office requires it too. We have an ordinance. It, yeah. It's a matter of. Uh, yeah. Four inches. Four inches, I believe the ordinance is. It? Uh, and also a different color than the house. So there's a lot of houses that it blends. You can't tell. <coughs> People try to match their house. I guess you want to say. It's hard to see. Those are things that they'll have to tell me. So when I send them letters, it can be specific to what the color is of the house. Didn't we do that about six, seven years ago? Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, we've got to redo it again though, because it can't go by that one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the ordinance is in place to help residents in this community. Yeah. The three agencies here, it's a big, big, big help. Yeah. Uh, one other thing that I talked to people about is the fire hydrants. Um, there are many fire hydrants that are located throughout the community. We have identified a couple of them that were. Um, Surrounded by debris and shrubbery and overgrown. Yeah, overgrown. We ask that uh, those property owners that have them uh, on their property to maintain them uh, and clear them of this debris and shrubs. Now, I will say that I looked and I don't believe we have anything that requires them to do that. Uh, so we're, we're asking and pleading with property owners to, uh, to clear those up. One last thing I got, I, I had a uh, complaint this evening about the new stop sign at Maine and, and Pesavento that there are some violators who uh, are occurring there in, in, in a maybe dangerous situation if you want to speak to that. They don't they don't stop and they swear at those of us that are going to the down to Main Street that we don't have a stop sign. But they don't like they do either. I think that possibly it would help if we had the you know the signs that say Tell you that opposing traffic doesn't stop opposing because I'm not. No, no, yeah, I know. I'm saying, but the people that are, I, I know they're wrong. So oh, okay. well, trust me, I, I know it. Just it's more neighbor. But you know, I think, uh, and I agree. If you get to a, an area where you come down and they're running through, and they're looking at you like you ran a stop sign as well. So I, I have my own personal beliefs on what's going on there. But maybe if there's a little bit more information that some of the traffic does not stop and other traffic does stop might help the situation a little bit. I don't know if that's an option or not. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we all agreed that there would be a learning curve. It was a new traffic control device there, and, and uh, certainly we want to... It appears that it's not been... Uh, it's not that it's not a learning curve, it's more that blatant disregard. I know we've issued some citations up there, but I know also last week a few times I tried to get rid of where it was closed because of the water line. So. And they also had that the water main truck was parked to a point where it blocked the visibility of the sign for a few days. And I know it's just been moved now, so I don't know that that was definitely an issue for I'm trying to think. We have two signs up there. The yeah. sign coming up, the right turn keeps moving, mm -hmm. and the sign coming out of St. Clair. It might not hurt to put an additional sign on there saying opposing traffic does not yeah. stop. Yeah, well, you know, whatever. We had a conversation about, I think one time there was a stop sign facing the traffic coming off the of know many years ago, possibly. So um, you know, there was some debate if there was actually a sign there, but it got, it got taken out by an accident many years ago. So uh, it might not be a bad idea, you know, because there is one other stop sign, but you know, it's, 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 It makes, it makes sense under the end of TCB, I believe that sign opposing traffic does not stop. It would be logical on that. Public yeah. works could do it. I think it would 
be an immediate Now, 
prove it. Maybe nice. Maybe people say yes, no. no. But you see the kind of the kind of diversion that the conversation can take. Instead of talking about the things that are important, we talk about things that are not. On the residential side, we have a number of alleys that are being that are the main entrance ways for their residences. We have that to the residents of Liberty Street Extension. We have that to residents on Presley. We need to do something to help those, to make those alleyways the kind of streets that you would be proud to have a house on. Because that's how those residents access their homes, especially Liberty Street Extension. I know I have perhaps not mentioned that before, but it is important. There are other items, there are other pieces. I'm hopeful that we can move forward on a number of them. There are relatively small changes that we can make that would truly change the way we're, the direction we're heading. Thank you, uh, Police Chief. No report. Thank you. So, sir. I have nothing to add to my director. Your sights. Thank you, Mr. President. We've uh, covered the, uh, the sidewalk underneath the wheeling like the railroad that has our first item on our report. Uh, the next item is the uh, contract B, Bower Hill Road repairs. Uh, as you all are aware, People's Gas has been uh, working on the replacement of the main gas line on Bower Hill Road. Once that work is completed, uh, T.A. Robinson can move in and do their work now. When we just a, a point of note here, when we awarded the contract, we awarded it to T.A. Robinson so that he would do the work during the daylight and that cost of $68,736. Obviously our quantities increased from that, but the nighttime price to do the work was $4,000 more. So what I wanted to ask you was, since the gas company's doing the work at night, would there be any consideration your pleasure if you'd like to make the request of T.A. Robinson to do the work at night for the additional four thousand dollars. I think uh, that's a good idea. I don't think anybody would mind having the construction be done at night and the rush hour. Okay. So Joe, so, uh, would they be able to reopen the road during the day then? That would be the goal, Joe. Yes, I think they probably could only be able to do whatever they could get done at night and have it open back up. DCNR done back in June and submitted those funds to, to them because of the land and water conservation funds uh, that we get for those parks. So that's documentation gets back in. Just it was just a kind of a, a you know, housekeeping right, kind of inspection, a couple things, some slides that or swings that need to be repaired. Uh, they looked at the uh, playground and put up at Polk School Park also. And uh, I think we were already aware of the, the damage that were being yeah. repaired. Uh, nothing new to report on the James and Washington Street development. And then uh, we met uh, a few weeks ago over at PennDOT regarding the uh, Chartier and Washington Avenue and Chartier and the Bridge intersection. Um, the, the funding has been given. Lori and I are going down to Allegheny County Department of Economic Development next week for a workshop on how to uh, complete, spend the money and complete the administrative paperwork for so, if I can interrupt, Washington and James, are they ever going to take out Penn State? No, that's, that's a good question. Well, if we ask them to, I think he will. Can. He wanted to keep it up until the grass grew, and we were actually, we did we a lot of last, last, week. last week, and grass had grown. grass has grown, so I can ask him to take it down. Yeah. yeah. So that's all I have. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Fire Chief, 
Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, yeah, I have our report for last month's calls. Uh, as you can see, we were kind of busy last month. Also, again, thanks to everybody who attended the Fire Department of Chambers gun bash. It went really well for the first time. Uh, we're happy with it and looking forward to keep it going. So thanks to everybody for the support. And the only other little thing I have is you guys talked about it was the hydrant up on Main Street. Uh, we did add a hydrant up there and we're moving a hydrant. So the person down on Mill Street is probably going to be happy here a couple of doors down from where Mill and Main meet. They're going to remove that hydrant because that's in reality a bad location for us as we come in. So they're going to have a parking spot. So they'll probably be happy, but that's why we moved the one up to the corner there. And we added the one at the corner of Main and Pesadento because that area for us was too far away from the hydrants where they're at. It's our opportunity to do it when they're putting the hydrants in. There's no cost to add them. It's the rental fee. That's it. And thanks for you guys for the support on that. That's it. All right. Uh, I don't see Becky for the library. Does anybody else have anything in the library? All right. Uh, for uh, manager report, Lori. I submitted more than one report. Then I have some questions. Uh, old business. The concept plans for both Ridge Cook and Golden Street by Ridge Cook. Um, at the last meeting, there was some discussion about getting a traffic study for Ridge Cook. Um, given that the meeting cycle is you know, a full month, uh, I know council was looking to get some sort of uh, understanding, but I think maybe council has a better understanding of what the solicitor is looking for in that traffic study, and they perhaps might at least approve looking for it or getting it or, or seeing if it's possible to get. I don't know if that's something. No, we haven't been able to make the construction like that. We were waiting for the building houses to take it. We were well, we counting traffic. Uh, no, we're not really. We're not. I'm sorry, we didn't remember. There's assumptions built into the cake that we're assuming we'll go without it anything. We're really not studying that. What we want to study is that we want to do a study um, that is actually complementary to um, the concept, the neighborhood plan that we have, just to fit all aspects of it inside our own neighborhoods, what we're doing in the area, and just kind of around the whole um, area before we move forward. Just kind of vet our own kind of park plan and stuff up there. Uh, Lori and Joe and I It's not a problem. Talk about 
Credit Commission. I don't go nobody's behind nobody's back. I'm telling you for a word. You know, you people, you know how they are. And Lord has been saved for a little bit, busy and so forth. So I figured I bring some of my idea of Credit Commission. I remember Planning Commission meet monthly and you advertise that we could, including myself, say that the last Monday of the month we should post that meeting. How this change happened, I don't know. I asked many people, but we need as needed. If nobody built anything, they don't do nothing. You guys want to be on planning commission, there'll be another another year. So my idea is if we want to do that, it's fine. We can call that a review board. We're not a planning commission. Planning, we plan some, bring to you guys, and you can do whatever you want. I believe there's some young guys here who want to, I feel very non-educated on some of the, the, uh, the people you have coming in here. I think they could go out in the credit commission. I understand the way that we it be waging problem. But maybe commission can meet without the solicitors at a certain time, of course, without an engineer, without the board manager. So we can save money in that. At least once a quarter, those companies should be present. But we can be by ourselves every minute. And of course, everything legal, we don't have to discuss, we can just put in our mind this which we want to do and pass it on. Come on. If we have an idea, it's going to take another year before we give it to you. What the hell have we wanted you in this community? No need, right? And I'm sorry, I mean, I don't want to <laughs> what I mean, show I that I know everything. Yeah, I don't. But especially this, uh, in this cycle, you know, the interest of their low. And I, and I disagree, of course. And we're going to build five store, ten store. But yeah, it costs $30 square foot, $35 square foot. Bridgeville cannot support those expenses. In other words, you're not going to find the people to come here and pay $25 square foot. But rehabilitation, of buildings that we have present, home that we have, <coughs> that we should look into. But if somebody wants to come in and, and put five, six million and build five-story building and integral garage, God bless him. But my idea, Bridgewell cannot support those expenses. Planning Commission it isn't about oh, is one person want to build a building. It's and I think Pat, and this is where he's coming in. He wants the Planning Commission to meet regularly, not sure. to figure out what one person wants to do, but what our town wants to do as a whole. Absolutely. Where, where do you want to see our town? I ten agree. Years from now? Well, I went you know, to that because you can't just do that in ten years. You no, know, it's, it's, it's right. I say this to me because I hear other people here. Oh, we're going to make a four or five store building with a cafe underneath. It would be nice with this and that. It's not about one building. It's not about one. It's about what do you do from Fire Hill Road to the trust yeah, yeah, That's correct. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If I, I'm wrong on that, that could be many, many years to come. Well, that, that's but that's rehabilitation of present structure we have now, a new structure definitely should be talk about it monthly. Absolutely. Absolutely, excuse me. Uh, because I'm not too intelligent, you 
I'm sorry, I'm okay, no, I forgot what I wanted to say. But, uh, yeah, we should definitely meet. Yes, absolutely. And the zoning, the zoning, they're a lot better than where they were. No question. A few things. I like many times I talk to Tom and Lori, the engineer. If somebody wants to build something that's not in a, in a zoning order, we work with them. Sure, sure. But without any problem, somebody who wants to come in and, 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 and put $200,000 in our town, we'll, we'll work on it. You guys will work on it. They have to comply with the code. Absolutely. Then I was there. But sometimes got, somebody has a new idea and our recipe book doesn't fit it. And if you like it, you change your recipe book. Exactly. But they've got to comply. Planning Commission is going to get the plan. It's going to look the it's going to look the sidewalk. It's going to look the the the, 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 the drainage. It's going to look all that. So of course, they got to comply. We don't want everybody to come down here and to build to what they want. They got to comply. I just recommend that. Forget about the things going to build it, but the zoning could be could be shaped a little bit. Yes, Pat. Thank you. It would be helpful. Council would, it, would state that it wants the Planning Commission to meet monthly starting at the end of September and to, to just meet. It, they're looking for you to just say that. Just, it, it's very easy for me just to make an agenda, and if there's an agenda for the Planning Commission, they meet. For, for the, in the past, if there wasn't anything on the agenda, then they did not meet. As far as right now, there's something on the agenda regarding design standards, but I was waiting um, until the, the additional two members um, were appointed to have uh, to have everyone there to review the design standards. So it's very simple. I just make an agenda and the members show up. It is not uncommon. Almost every municipality, some actually don't have enough activity that they all so that they always meet on the on but even most municipalities that advertise monthly planning commission meetings, even in the some that you know that have a very heavy schedule, it turns out sometimes they don't, so they just don't have a meeting if they don't have an agenda. Planning commissions serve two functions. They do the plan review on every application, but they also do long-range planning. That can be your own their own with things that they have that they want to percolate out or things that you want, like we do things that you want them to going down. So it's an interactive process. I don't believe it would be kind of useful just to dictate or mandate that they meet every month. That's already done and again by what they have to do to dictate and they're meet. Going, they're going to want to know what they to do. Yes, sir. You know, you guys kind of back around the problem. What was your term? Dissolution? Dilution? Dilution? It's not, not dissolution. Yeah. Seven is probably too many. I've heard other people that. And if the problem is people aren't attending the meetings, those people should not be on the commission anymore. And you guys, with 30 days notice, can uh, remove anyone you want from any commission that you want. So if you have an attendance sheet and you know who's not coming, then you should just downsize the commission. <laughs> no, it's not a reform issue. It's just you have someone on the agenda, do you not? And yeah. again, I think Lori explained that what's going on right now is that there's she didn't want to push a project out while you're kind of at the flux with membership. But certainly, this council can give marching orders to, hey, this, hey, that, or the planning commission can, and it's on its own under its chairperson, say, hey, let's look at this. And it can, on its own, decide that it wishes to meet every month and have an agenda. It does not need the council to tell it that it has something on its agenda or not. If it has applications, obviously, it has to meet, but the planning commission, on its own, can say, ladies and gentlemen, Let's look at this issue on the planning commission level, and you can. And we then have, you can send it up to flagpole and if they like it, they'll take it. If not, it's an interactive process. We haven't had, we've only had one meeting where we haven't had a problem. So. I thought that was a reason for adding two more. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
being there, then they're not interested in being That was that was my and it wasn't and I thought other people weren't coming out. I mean there are people that show up every time there's a meeting, so I just believe that's what stay with us. That's the only reason why I'm bringing it up. I'm not, I have no clue who comes or that. That's I'm not what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I'm just saying, if we can check the minutes, that's what was said. That's why. We, all, we usually always have three. Now, we, we don't always have five. I'm, I'm just yeah. repeating what was said last week. Yeah. Then, yeah. My, my, my consideration for increasing it is to get some more people involved in involved in the process. We, we've come, we've Got the cool school area. We have Baldwin Street area, and and I'd, I'd like to get some more people involved in what's going on. I agree. You don't need to convince me. I'm just yeah. saying. I'm just saying that, that was the intention. I'm asking why. You know, I, I think that what everyone's saying here makes sense. There should be a meeting monthly if we're trying to plan stuff and move forward as a community. Not everybody has to come to every meeting, obviously, but that doesn't seem unrealistic. It's not. You know, and so yeah. that's, I think we're all arguing about, you know, we seem to be going back and forth a lot, but that's the bottom line. Yes, Pat. This, the, the planning commission is scheduled to meet at the end of this month. Is it going to meet? And I'm asking the, the council now. Yeah. And it's not, in my legal opinion, I think I interjected, was it's not appropriate for council to dictate it. Yeah. Well, it's it's so if it doesn't the planning commission, is there? But the planning commission seems to be thinking it is. And I agree with the solicitor, by the way. The chair of the planning commission could call the meeting. Okay? But the chair of the planning commission thinks he's looking for counsel to say that it should have a meeting. This kind of dance is... They don't, I don't think that's what I'm saying. Okay, well, I'm saying that. I think, I think, that's I think what Laura explained is right now, she didn't sure. want to put something on her plate and they don't happen to have the yes. agenda item and haven't started something when you're getting ready to put new pizza on. And you've got to start all over and right? two more people. So why? That would be a waste of time. And I think yes. you just explained to the Planning Commission that Council would like them to be more involved with the planning process and that type of thing, then right now and for the past few years it has been if there is something on the table they meet, um, if there is a zoning update they meet, um, if it, that type of thing, if, there, if they met with the neighborhood plan, um, those type of things. But it, it hasn't been something every month. So if, if it's communicated to them that council would like them to meet and you know, and I, and I think the addition of the two more people, and that's a good time to begin the new process. It, well, you haven't added two more people this month. Is that an excuse not to have them meet again this month? I'm mean, just asking. You know, I, I, I the community sure would I, like to know. There's a schedule so meeting, and I'd like to know because usually I'm here alone because there is no one from the planet. By the way, they tell me that's not. The point being, there are five people on this body right now. It is set to meet. It is legally advertised to meet. The only reason I understand that they are not meeting, now there's two reasons. Because they thought maybe having two more members would change things. They don't even know that there are two, two more members are going to be. Exactly. So, they should just, go they should just meet. And that's what I'm asking council to express an opinion on. I have mine. Do the do, do, does council have an opinion? Are we saying we want the planning commission to actually plan things and be proactive? Yes. Yes. Then why don't we just say that instead of that's Well, maybe maybe one of you will pass a motion to that effect. Right. Another one will second. Right. And again, it does have a far motion. Yes. I think. Well, okay. Just by way of explanation, I think they've all said that. The answer, yes. I think, is explained that there's nothing on the agenda and there actually are things they want to participate in, but they want to wait until they have their full complement one month from now. Well, yeah, those two projects. That, that, was that, that, was that, that was me that that was me that felt that all sure. seven should be there when they started on their But it made sense to me. But if council wanted I send an agenda and then right. they meet. So do an agenda so he can go to a meeting. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Any other old business? Well, I, I, it would be appropriate for you to check with the chairman to see if it's short enough. Check with the chairman. Yeah. 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 Any other old business? Any new business? I have one thing. Yes, sir. The bridge.
Bill South Bay River, he asked me to announce, and thank you, Larry, for the banner ad. Uh, October 2nd is the 10th annual Chili Cook-Off. So they're looking to do a whole bunch of fun things up at the Cook-Off. They are looking for some chefs that think they are uh, uh, going to uh, meet the uh, ongoing winners. And rumor has it at least one of the Borough Council members are volunteering to judge. We are looking for a second one. So, uh, October 2nd. Do you have tickets? I have tickets. Thanks, Bert. <laughs> so, if anybody would like, they are $10. I just want to say, it's one of the best things to do. Well, we have more time to do. The best part is, it's a night steer game. So, it's a... Uh, that's that's a that's a you're safe. safe. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're safe. Steers are not involved. That's something. Real quick, Lori. Lori, when you get a chance, just so we can get it in next year's budget, I want to introduce some technology here so that we can see school work and things like other communities. Joe can test. Yeah. So we go to Cecil Township. We have a projector and we have a wall. We could see some some pricing on that so we can get it signed. And then, Mr. Sister, if you can just keep counsel, I know this was a sensitive issue of Patrick's Church. Sure. So keep that dialogue, it's a long month. I would make a motion. 